Russian authorities in the Belgorod region are reporting attempted Ukrainian incursions across the border. The regional governor described the situation as difficult but under control. Belgorod is next to the Kursk region, where Ukrainian troops have seized hundreds of square kilometers of territory in an offensive launch this month. In Ukraine itself, five people were killed and more than a dozen injured following another wave of Russian drone and missile attacks. This follows Monday's bombardment, which officials called the biggest of the war. President Volodymyr Zelensky and his defense minister, Rustem Umarov, held a press conference earlier today, and our correspondent Sonia Falnikar was there. She asked Umarov about the long-range weapons that Ukraine wants from its Western allies. You have repeatedly asked your Western partners to lift restrictions on long-range weapons to hit military targets deep inside Russia. How hopeful are you to get that kind of support? What are you doing to convince them? And what else does Ukraine need uh, in, the, in the near term from its Western partners to help defend itself? Thank you. They say that uh, hope dies last. So uh, we have uh, argumented our partners uh, that to stop the enemy uh, to come to our borders to create their buffer zone, we created a buffer zone, not to allow them to enter to our uh, uh, borders. So we are focusing to the airfields, to the logistic hubs, uh, and not to the places that they would be attacking us, because they are attacking with the S-300s, S-400s, and terrorizing our population. That is the uh, need that we need now at the moment, and it is crucial to receive it. Uh, every weapon that uh, Ukraine has received went through uh, big pain, and you know that we were able and capable to use it, and that is why we do not understand why our international partners does not allow us. And Sonia Falnikar, whom you just saw there briefly, joins me now. Sonia, another item Ukraine spent a long time asking for were F-16 fighter jets. Now they've reportedly been used to counter Russia's most recent attacks. Tell us more about that. That's right. I mean, President Zelensky today confirmed that the Ukrainian Air Force had indeed used the F-16s to repel a Russian missile attack. Um, and this is really the first confirmation that we're getting that they were indeed used, because so far we've only seen images of them having reached uh, Ukraine. And one of the key uses uh, of these F-16 fighter jets is really this, you know, intercepting missiles which are difficult to get uh, through conventional land-based systems. Now, we don't have any details of when and where they were used, but it has certainly raised hope here that these jets uh, can make a big difference. Though, of course, there is a worry as well that uh, Russia, they, they could become a big target for Russia if Ukraine started using these jets uh, frequently. And just today, we saw some threats from Russia with Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, uh, you know, kind of saying that if the West allowed Ukraine to use uh, uh, long-range uh, uh, weapons within uh, Russia, it would amount to, he said, blackmail. He said uh, Russia is adjusting its nuclear weapons doctrine. He said it's dangerous for Western nuclear powers to be playing with fire. So this is exactly the kind of rhetoric, of course, that Ukraine's Western allies are, are kind of worried about and worried about, you know, escalation with Russia. Mm -hmm. Are there any more details on that cross-border operation in Russia? Well, at the press briefing today, President Zelensky said some of the objectives of this uh, incursion into Russia's Kursk uh, region had already been achieved. He said it had thwarted the Russian military's plans to occupy the border regions of Cherniv and Sumy. He also claimed that the incursion had slowed the advance of Russian troops to Pokrovsk. This is a strategic town in the eastern Donetsk region where Russian forces uh, are on the attack. One of the main goals of this incursion was to try and ease the pressure in the east on overstretched um, Ukrainian defenses there. And today at the briefing, we also heard from Ukraine's top military commander, Alexander Sirsky, and he said Russia has indeed begun to redeploy uh, about 30,000 troops, he said, from different sectors in Ukraine to Kursk. He said that number would increase. One other interesting thing we heard today from President Zelensky, he talked about a plan for victory, which he said he wants to present to the U.S. He said uh, this ongoing Kursk incursion is part of that plan. He also said it's linked to Ukraine's second peace summit, which is said to be held uh, later this year. And that peace summit is all about, you know, widening global support for Ukraine's peace formula, which is centered on this idea that, uh, you know, all uh, uh, Russian troops withdraw from, from all of Ukraine. So I think we're certainly seeing some movement here about peace negotiations and some indication 
that one of the goals uh, of this incursion was indeed to get Russia to the negotiating table. But they're saying that there's no way that that will happen. That was Sonia Falnikar in Kyiv. Thank you so much.